first thing in the morning. Just rolled out of bed. Update. Good Monday morning, everyone. Look at my little H. Gigas. Just hanging out so cute. There is my Serata Gyrus Darlingi. Last night, in the middle of the night, my little H Mac was out. Nope, not anymore. Yeah, everyone's doing good. There's nothing sad to report. That's always a good thing. Little LP. M Robustum. I have an, a Phonopelma calcades who's in um, pre-molt. And um, also my AC Moni that I got in the show in Monroe, Washington on May 8th. I think it was and the wolf spiders taking some nice healthy poops last night the P uh, Rufus was out not a lot going on as far as the the spooters are concerned I mean everybody's just doing their thing and it's been a really busy week for me I've been moving uh, things out of my house and and getting rid of it and making some room and just surprised there's a lot of room here. Anyway, I've been reading this interesting book. It's called The Plea Wick Journal, The Making of a Wilderness Retreat by Lou McKee. And it's really nice. It's, uh, it's got uh, drawings in it and it's about making a wilderness retreat in Canada or somewhere around Vancouver Island. There's all these beautiful illustrations. Um, read, I read through the first chapter, and it's about kayaking, sea kayaking, um, into these little coves on Vancouver Island, and camping. So it's really nice. I like it. I love all of these drawings in here. Weathered oyster shell. So detailed. I really want to do something like this, but it just seems like there isn't enough time. There probably is. I'm just not making it a priority. But anyway, it's an interesting book if you're, you like reading about wilderness journeys and you like journal journals. Still no sign of the snot gurgle. Nope, not even a little foot. Only the foot that got thrown out. Snot gurgle molted and... Haven't seen her for a little while. There, I mean, you can kind of see in here. I can see. I don't know if you can, but her foot is there. There's another foot there. So I know she's in there. She's fine. She's just taking longer to molt because she's bigger now. I'll show you this cute picture that I found in my grandmother's stuff of these two T Rex. There. They're eating their meat popcorn together. Looks like someone colored it. Probably my grandma, who knows. They're watching a dinosaur soap opera on TV. It's just so cute and she'd put things like this in a frame. So she really was a quirky, eccentric individual. I miss her very much. And uh, you can probably see why. So good morning, everyone. Um, early here and I haven't even washed my face aren't I bad I'm having coffee I thought I'd have coffee with you um, and uh, share with you a little bit about what's going on um, I have uh, rearranged my collection a little bit so that I have the old world species on the top shelf or close to the top shelf and then I have all my dwarfs in one section and um, yeah, so it makes it just a little easier to kind of at a glimpse know who's where. I mean, I did have a good system, even though it was chaotic and to other people, I could tell where all my tarantulas were. So actually it's taking some adjusting to get used to having them in, in a category, um, which is weird because when I was a kid, I always categorized everything. Uh, I'd either have it categorized according to color, according to breed, type, you know. I collected model horses. Um, yeah. I'm going to be adding a second shelf in here. 
and uh, that's gonna help uh, with the space and I might move my computer desk downstairs because uh, it's more humid and, and warm in here and I just figured that's probably not good for the computer equipment. I made a list of all of my confirmed females and I have 14 which was actually a surprise to me. I didn't really realize that I had that many confirmed females and when I say confirmed um, these are all females that I'm able to look at their molts, um, not, not, not ventrally, but the inside of their molts and see their spermatheci and uh, actually draw a picture of it so that I have a reference so that when I'm like not sure the next time I can look in my book and I can, I can see that, you know, they're confirmed female. So that's what confirmed female means to me. Um, and well, my hair is kind of, uh, so uh, my, my list of confirmed females, I've got my grandma stole poker peas, that's a little thing, and I've got my Aphonopoma calcudes. I got her from Ken the bug guy. Uh, she was three plus inches. I mean, she was, she was bigger than three inches. She was advertised as three inches, but she was bigger than that. She was my first larger tarantula, so that was a fun experience um, unpacking her and seeing her and I'm just feeling like wow this is this is really new and she's so big. I also have a Theraphosinae species Rotan from Fear Not who is confirmed female. My grandma stole a pulchra ended up being female which I was really happy about. Uh, my Chromatopelma cyaneopubescens is confirmed female and I just confirmed my Carabina versicolor as female when I had um, this one down as suspect male. Um, my Laziodora parahibana peekaboo, um, she's been confirmed female for a while. My Pelinobius muticus was bought as confirmed female, she's uh, five years old at least. Um, my Harpectura pulchra piece that I got um, in May in Monroe at the Reptile Expo is also confirmed female. My um, H. Himalayana is confirmed female. Uh, my Formictopus concerides, this one was just confirmed female as well, just this last week after, um, well, a couple weeks ago, I think after molting. Um, and my H. species Columbia Large that I got from Dean's Tarantulas is female. And my Brachypelma Hamori, Hamori um, is confirmed female. And then I got a P species Rufus from Fear Not. Uh, I think this one was um, sold as two inches. And uh, this one just molted and confirmed female. And this one was out last night. I, I wish I had a picture to show you, but just a very beautiful uh, peach. Peach, I think it's the peach earth tiger, just a beautiful, beautiful um, earth tiger. Uh, I think they're from Indonesia. Um, I could be wrong. I, I should probably look that up. But that's what I, I think. I think that they're from Indonesia. Um, just really pretty, and I'm gonna be. I'm curious to see if it'll it'll spend some time out, you know, or if it'll spend most of its time buried. Um, and it doesn't. It doesn't matter, you know. I here's something that I've found, you know, keeping tarantulas is that they're 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 pretty easy to care for. Um, you know, you do need to have some kind of system uh, to not forget about them and let you know their let them dry out. You know, particularly if they're slings and they're vulnerable, um, you need need to be kind of attentive to which ones have molted and what schedule they're on so that you can control you know, the moisture and not let them get dehydrated. But if you can stay on top of all of that, you know, and I mean, I check mine daily. Um, you know, so if something goes wrong, I find it um, probably within 12 hours of when it happened. Uh, so, so the interesting thing is that, you know, that people talk a lot about, you know, do you like new world, old world, you know, and then they'll, they'll, they'll say, you know, that this tarantula is a pet hole or, um, and they won't want those tarantulas for that reason sometimes, or, you know, sometimes it's the opposite. People don't want new world tarantulas. Um, 
And for me, I have found that I really enjoy the mixture because on different days, different tarantulas are doing different things. Sometimes I will have my king baboon, my Pelinobius muticus, who is a renowned pet hole. She will hang out um, near the entrance of her burrow. And when I say near the entrance, um, she has a hole and she's down inside and I can see through the glass so I can see that she's there. She's not up at the top, she's, she's down under. Um, my C. darlingi, on the other hand, will, will come out and hang out outside of its burrow a lot. <clears throat> so, you know, they're both old world, they're both baboon species, they just have different habits. I can still see my king baboon uh, because I did, I did wash out that one area so that I can see her when she's at her burrow entrance. So I have a view of her. And if she goes deep into her burrow, it usually means, I mean, usually it means she's not hungry. But, you know, that's not always true. I can put some feeders in there and she'll come forward and get them. Um, but when she's hanging out near the entrance of her burrow, I know she's still waiting for prey. And uh, that's probably one of the reasons why, you know, I don't want to overfeed her. Because I want to, you know, see that she's seeking out prey, kind of know where she's at. I don't expect her to molt for a long time because she just did. Um, so she's a big, pretty big girl. I, I don't know how big. I mean, she was 4.5 inches, I think. So, I mean, she's probably at least five or so. And, um, you know, I have other species that I, I'm not seeing a lot of, you know, they're either because they're slings or, you know, just, it could also be, who knows what it is, but I, I do plan to, uh, set up some old world enclosures and especially with my Asian species in, I'm thinking of using some exoterras and, and making them look like the burrows that they have, you know, in Thailand and. I'm hoping, you know, they'll hang out kind of near the, near the opening and I'll be able to shine a light and see in there because I'm going to make their, their substrate more uh, vertical with a kind of like a slope, you know, maybe put some moss and stuff on there and make the, the hole into their burrow right into the, the wall so that they can kind of hang out like this at the opening because I see that a lot in videos of the earth tigers um, in their native habitats. So I'm pretty excited about doing that and that'll be something I'll just do slowly over time. Um, yeah, so so my Monday update, I um, just wanna share those things with you. Um, and I'll give you a look uh, at my collection and see how I've arranged everything. Down here on the bottom shelf, I have, um, big my bigger tanks and this is my Theraphosinae species Rotan um, and this is my uh, LP Peekaboo uh, Phonopoma calcades and my AC Bonnie uh, these Phonopomas really like digging they keep themselves buried a lot my LP doesn't dig doesn't burrow always at the surface but I gave her a lot of substrate because at first she did want to climb I haven't seen her do it uh, for a while but yeah that's why and my Theraphosinae species Rotan doesn't really she doesn't really climb uh, much but she also has a lot of substrate she loves digging seems to prefer uh, more moisture than these others and uh, this is my M. robustum I have a really cute little Acanthus gurria geniculata and up above um, my LP number one who was actually smaller than LP number two. Tried sexing this one, couldn't really get any accurate read on it. Um, my Firmictibus concerides, she's a really pretty girl. Grandma stole a poker paste. This is Little Things Sacred Log. Don't mess with Little Things Sacred Log. My um, beautiful wolf spider, Hogna species Arizona. I redid her enclosure. I did have cocoa fiber and a live plant in there, but she didn't seem to really like it. She was hanging around like she is now up, up on her cage, but now she, she goes on her log and she goes into the burrow and, and there's a lot more variability in where she hangs out. 
And some more um, New Worlds. These are some of my, my dwarf species, my Anense olives, Hapalopus species Columbia. Then I have uh, two New World arboreals, T. violaceus and my Carabina versicolor. I've got my H. David Bowie huntsman. And do we just have another? Oh, you have, okay. Um, this is my um, K. Brunapis. C. Rite, uh, C. Elegans, and Euathlis species red. And this is a dwarf species too, the Crypsidroma species Costa Rica. This one's about a year and a half old. And then those are all my dwarfs there. And then I've got Aphonopelma burica, Ternopelma sesimi, Barcopelma albopilosum. Um, my Ecampus stratus molted not too long ago. You can see the little, little pink carapace in there. Um, down here is my Nandu chromatis. And I uh, noticed that on a forum, they were talking about Nandu chromatis and Ecampus scoria geniculata. And I got uh, my Nandu and my Ecampus scoria at the same time. And they are really um, different in their growth rates. They've had the same diet. You know, I mean, well, I can't necessarily say that because the Nandu doesn't want to eat as much as the uh, geniculata. Um, but I did also get this LP at the same time as I got this A. geniculata. And LP is definitely bigger. The Nandu is the slowest growing. I have a little tiny B classy sling. I have another B classy su suspect male. Um, this is my, oh, this is my A hensi, my B classy. And this is my GBB, who's webbed a lot more lately and she is in pre molt now. This is Fiza. She's my B hamori, who is in, um, she has no fangs. She's being, being uh, fed manually. This is my lelephant, my curly hair, uh, my stick insect. Where is he? Oh, he's over on the other side. So he's in there. He's time for new brambles for him. And this is my king baboon. Usually I can see her inside of her entranceway, but her burrow goes way back there. H. Mac. These are all old worlds. H. Gigas. C. Darlingi, always showing me his bum. C. Marshali, H. Polka Pace, this one molted. I don't know if we can see her in there, but she just molted. I have a um, H. Villicella, uh, C. Fimbriatus, C. Oliviseum, P. Vitata, P. Metallica, P. Subfusca. There's an O. Uh, Aria tibialis. C. Species Bachma, H. Himaliana, P. Species Rufus, and there are a few more that um, I'm working on enclosures for right now. Um, a Nandu tripepi, H. Caffariana, and I'm going to have a second um, H. Polka Pace, and Anaphona Palma Moderatum that I'm really excited about. Yep. So that's how I've arranged everything. And I'm probably going to put a second shelf back here. I'm going to hang this plastic over this door just for a little more insulation because that back room, it's being remodeled in the next two weeks. So I think um, the door is going to be open. I'm going to have a fan going, blowing everything out. Um, and I want to seal this room up um, away from just not only cooling down but um also from any fumes or anything so there you have it that is today's uh first thing in the morning just rolled out of bed update so hmm. i hope you've enjoyed it and um get some more stuff out to you this week we got a tarantula death match and I'm still working on my presentations for the educational videos. And I'm thinking 
I might I might run those on Fridays, but I'm not I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't completely figured it all out, but I am working on it. So I hope that you've enjoyed and spending some time with me. And um I had better um get this video edited and get on my way. I've got a lot of stuff to do. So uh Thank you for watching, and I just want you to know that it means a lot to me that you're here, that you're interested in what I'm doing. It's really nice to be able to share with someone, uh, particularly, you know, um, you know, being an introvert, being introverted like I am, and um, it's it's very special to me that that I can share, and that there's other people out there that are interested in the same thing. So, uh, yeah. Leave your comments below, subscribe if you're interested, and I uh, can't wait to hear from you.